I wonder how many of you want to run a home server, but are afraid of receiving a huge electricity bill. And here is the solution. A home server that draws just around 2 watts. And when I say home server, I usually mean anything that can run Proxmox, because this is my personal definition of a home server. Does it run Proxmox? If yes, it can be classified a home, as a home server. And uh, I wanted to find a device capable of running Proxmox while drawing as little electricity as possible. And as you can see, this is Raspberry Pi 3B. And I know it's a bit extreme, since it only has one gigabyte of RAM. So yes, we are going to be very limited, but as a proof of concept, <laughs> it's great. I believe this is the smallest Raspberry Pi that can actually run Proxmox. And if you have a newer Raspberry Pi with 4 gig uh, RAM or more, your experience will be much better. But it still works with this Pi, with just one gig of RAM, so let's see how we can install Proxmox on it. If you visit the official Proxmox website, you might run into a small problem, because there is no official Proxmox image for ARM-based architectures. Because Raspberry Pis run or ARM processors, so you can't just use standard Proxmox ISO image. And this is a bit strange, to be honest, because the underlying Debian operating system and all packages are available for ARM processors. That's not a problem. So I think maybe eventually we will get official ARM ISO directly from Proxmox, but for the time being, there are some people that make so-called forks or ports of Proxmox that can actually run on ARM-based CPUs, as in this Raspberry Pi. And today we are going to use a fork called PXVERT that can be installed on top of Debian operating system. If you are not aware, Proxmox already runs on top of Debian, so it's basically the same thing, but for ARM processor. But that means the first thing we have to do is to flash our micro SD, somewhere here, as you can see. I will flash this micro SD, but maybe you are running it directly on SSD drive, that's, you know, possible as well. I will just use this small card. That's because we will do everything from scratch here, all right? So let's flash this micro SD with Debian 13. Or Debian 12 bookworm, because it also works. I mean, this guide also works with Debian 12 bookworm, just if you were uh, wondering. But uh, Debian 13, uh, codename Trixie, is newer, so why not use the newest one? So what you have to do, you have to download Raspberry Pi Imager, it's called. Note that you can't use Rufus or Balena Etcher for that. You have to use that Raspberry Pi Imager. You then insert your micro SD card in whatever devices you are going to use for flashing uh, process, and you start that Raspberry Pi Imager. And now you choose the device. For me, it's Raspberry Pi 3B, which means I choose this one. But as I said, if you have four or five Raspberry Pi, they have much better processors and uh, much more RAM, so <laughs> recommended, I guess. But I will choose the Raspberry Pi 3, because that's what I have. The Choose OS. I will go for the top operating system, which is 64-bit Debian Trixie, as you can see. And it's already selected, so that's fine. And now I choose Storage. And for the storage, I have to choose that micro SD that I just inserted. So I select it, and I just say Next. Would you like... Uh, customizations, no, thank you. And remember that all the data will be erased, so be careful with that. Make sure it's correct micro SD, yes. But I'm sure about it. I've got, I only have one, anyways, inserted, so I say yes. It doesn't take long, it takes a minute or two, the writing process. And it's job done now. You will get some pop up uh, messages from Windows because it doesn't recognize the file system, but it doesn't matter, you just close everything, and as it says, you remove the SD card, and then you insert that SD card, you have to connect the keyboard and the mouse to your Raspberry Pi, you have to connect the power of course, and the HDMI cable to connect it to your monitor. That's the first screen you see when you switch on your Raspberry, and you simply follow the standard installation process. You might have noticed we already have IP address, that's because we use wired connection. Yeah. It's pretty important to use wired connection rather than Wi-Fi, because Proxmox doesn't like Wi-Fi. You just click Next, Next, Username. You can skip the Wi-Fi, we are not interested in that at all. For the browser, I will choose Firefox, but both of them will be installed. System will update all the software, so we don't have to worry about it. We want to have it up to date anyways. I say launch. 
and that's our Debian 13 installed. Pretty quick and easy, and we can see our IP address again in top right corner. And maybe first let me show you something. We will go to Internet, to Firefox, and I will open new tab, and I will go to github.com, to Automation Avenue, to Proxmox on Raspberry. And these are my notes, and this is my little script that can help us with that process. I created a little readme file, which we can go through, but you can also see that pxvertpreps.shell. This is a bash script that we will use. Original instructions can be, can be found here on the pxvert website. And you can see here every single step that we have to go through. But I <laughs> looked at that, so like download gpg, then add to the sources list, then change the host name, blah blah, install up, down, to, execute these commands, execute that commands. I was like, no, no, I'm too lazy for that. I mean, I can do it once, but what if I want to reinstall the Proxmox later on, yes? I don't want to go through it over and over again. That's why I created this little uh, script here, but I don't want to take any credit for that. <laughs> it's still, this script is based on all the documentations and all the instructions that you can find here on the original website, all right? On the pxvert, layer, fang, uh, whatever it's called. So let's follow maybe my readme file. As I said, this script will work with both Debian 12 and Debian 13, but note that <laughs> if you are running Debian 12, you will end up with Proxmox 8. But if you are running like I did, I just flashed Debian 13, that will give us Proxmox 9, the newer one. And I think that's the better option, yes? That's why I think it's worth to flash to newest Debian 13. Let's go further. You can see the Raspberry Pi flashing process. We already went through it. And now we can start our Raspberry Pi preparation process. There's not much to it, there are some basic checks. And first of all, before, because I run it from the micro SD card, it's advisable to turn the swap off. <laughs> because swap can kill your micro SD card in no time. So I will open the terminal and I will run that command sudo swap off a. It says killed, and that's what we want to see. It also says to check any entries in the Etsy FSTAB file. So let's run cat Etsy FSTAB. But I think we are all right. Can see a swap here. Next step, we need to create a root password. Because when you log on to Proxmox, it always asks you for password for the root user. And Raspberry Pi doesn't have by default password for that user. So we have to create one. And you run passwd root to do that, to create password. So do pass wd root and now you type your password then you type it again and it says password updated successfully and there are some further checks we don't do anything here we just check what it looks like it's ip address this will give you information about your interfaces for example for me i can see my interface eth0 has the IP address that was configured, 192.168.159, with the subnet mask of slash 24. And if we do cat etc network interfaces, um, what am I doing wrong? Ah, <laughs> sorry, that won't be available yet. I will have to amend that instruction. But we can check the hosts, maybe. Let's say cat etsy hosts. And the entry we are interested in is the last one. Currently, we've got host called Raspberry Pi, but it points to loopback interface. I know it might be confusing, but if you go to the original document, it will tell you exactly what it is about. So you should really use both documents, not only my document, but also the original one, because it will tell you, like, uh, you will find out what we are doing and why, yes? Let's go back to my GitHub. We can see it's currently loopback pointing to Raspberry Pi, and we will simply see how it changes later on. And now we just run my bash script. But uh, how do we run it? <laughs> we don't have it here locally on Raspberry, yes? We can simply scroll up. I can click on that. I mean, if you are familiar with GitHub, GitLab or Bitbucket, you can simply git clone it, like uh, using this command or using git clone and that URL. But you, if you are not familiar with the GitHub, then you can simply click on that uh, script. Now it's shown here. That's the entire script. And what it does, it downloads the GPG key, it adds repository to the sources list, it disables network manager that is used by default, it installs up, 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 down, everything that basically is here, all those lines, 
they will be performed by this script. And you can just click that copy raw file, I will click on that, I will go here, and I will say nano, and I will call the uh, file the same name as originally it was named on the GitHub, but it's, uh, the name can be anything really. And now I just paste. Everything has been pasted now, as you can see. So now I say Ctrl O, Enter, Ctrl X. <laughs> Again, looks like I'm not able to write in that particular location. Let me, <laughs> I'm in Etsy network. I will go to my home Marek location. I am able to write in my home directory, I should be fine. Now I say again, nano and this file, and I think I still have it in the clipboard, so I can just paste it. That's all the file. So again, Control O, Enter, Control X. Now I can see it. Can I? <laughs> yes, I can. The file is now here, and we can go back to the instruction, to the readme file. And we simply run it with this command, sudo dot forward slash and the file name. But before we do that, we have to change the mod. We have to add the execute permission. If we check what the permissions look like now, there is no execute permission. If I run change mod plus x, I will add those execute permissions to the file px vert preps blah blah. And if we run it again, now I can see execute permissions and it turned green, <laughs> which means now I should be able to run it. I say sudo dot forward slash px word preps dot shell. Press enter and you just wait for a while. Everything should be done automatically for you. Perfect, that's the job done. If we go to the document, we can check the Etsy network interfaces again. And that's what you want to see. Your interface, it might be different than ETH0, but it will be picked up automatically by the script anyways. And the virtual bridge, like a Linux bridge it is, it's now created. And the IP address is now assigned to that bridge instead of that physical interface. This is required because if we go here, if we scroll down, They only mention it here, create network bridge, but they don't show you exactly here how it's done. They also tell you about the root password, but we already have it done. And now we also have Linux bridge configured, all done automatically by this script. Other things that changed is this sources list. Let me run this command maybe. That's what you want to see. And you can see Trixie, which is Debian 13. This is basically a variable which here is shown as version code name. So if you are running Debian 12, you will see bookworm here, but because we are running Debian 13, yes, Debian 13, it has a code name Trixie. And one more thing you might want to check is that Etsy hosts file. If we run that, we can see that now Raspberry Pi host points to my IP address, rather than to loopback, starting with 127. So that's sorted as well. And what the original instruction says is that you should now reboot the machine to ensure that the uh, network is properly applied. Let's do that then. I go here and I say reboot. My Raspberry is rebooting now and we are back. Let's open Firefox again. It will take us straight to the pages we had open. And the last step is to install pxvert. This command I just copied from official pxvert website. As you can see, it's exactly the same. We just need to run apt update and install the necessary packages. I will just copy it. I mean, after reboot, you can check like your IP address, if everything is fine. You can check Etsy network interfaces. I know for me it works perfectly fine. That's why I skip it. But you can, th that's the point of the reboot, yes? That you check the networking works correctly. For me it does. So I just go for sudo apt update. And you can see that hit 5. We've got that lyrefunk.com. This is where the packages are located. And that's what we, why we have to run apt update. So the previous command we run for sources, it's uh, applied here. And we have access to that repository. Hope that makes sense. And now as a sudo, I just run this command below. I will just add dash y so it 
auto answer yes and these packages this proxmox ve qemu server etc they are all in that new repository that we have access to <laughs> as you can see even the firefox disappeared for some reason there are like black screens etc this process is pretty lengthy it takes over 10 minutes so i will fast forward it because there is no point for you to just watch the paint drying and here you will see one question it's regarding the packages and i left the default option which is n which leaves the current version of repository maybe there is something interesting in other ones that i'm not aware of i simply clicked enter here which is using default option no if you know more about this step please let me know in the comments but once you press enter the installation process will complete but as i said it takes over 10 minutes overall at least on my old <laughs> raspberry once the installation process is completed you can reach your server on https ip address of that linux bridge and port 8006 and this is what it looks like Instead of Proxmox, it says Learfunk Pixbeard. If you go to summary, <laughs> you can see that 1 gig of RAM isn't great. 79% even though we are not doing anything. But you can go here to see the templates. You can browse the templates. But yeah, that's it. That's all I wanted to show you. Hope that helps. Thank you for watching.